Okay, the system. Four X minus seven Y equals twenty eight. Two X plus Y equals ten. Okay. What's the x-intercept of, of this? How do you find the x-intercept? Let's just talk about that. This is something you really need to understand and learn because uh, this is how we graph almost anything. One of the first things we ask is what are the x-intercepts and what are the y-intercepts? Okay, I'm going to digress just a little bit. Here's an x axis and here's the y axis. I'm going to ask you if you could write down the coordinates of three points on the x axis, any three points you want. Give me the order pair for any three points on the x axis. Let's say 5, 9, 5, 9. We'll put negative three zero to point zero seven and to point twelve zero and the point zero fourteen. Okay. Look at these points and tell me how many of them would be on the x-axis. Just tell me is it one, is it two, is it three? Hold up fingers. Okay, everybody told me two of them were on the x-axis. That would be this one and this one. And then I asked for another one. Immediately got it, asked for another one, immediately got it, okay? You gotta get this really into your head that if it points on the x-axis, it's y-coordinate is zero, okay? So when I say what the points on the x-axis all have in common, well, they all have in common the fact that their y-coordinate is zero. So, mark some points on the x axis, give one of them its importance. Let's say this is negative 10, 0. You know that the y coordinate has to be 0. Now, if this is negative 10, 0, and this looks like it might be about negative 3, 0, and this looks like it might be about 2.5 zero and this one looks like it might be maybe eight zero. Okay. They all have x coordinate and y coordinate zero. Okay. Now if I've got a graph how many x intercepts do you see? There are two of them clear on the graph and that's what they extend the x axis on here. I'm just going to erase this part of it. So I to, okay. You know, if we keep going down here, yeah, it's going to hit the x axis, but we stop before we get to it. Um, even if the x axis is drawn out here, it's understood that it continues throughout both directions. Okay, so. We have x intercepts here and here. What are the y coordinates? Or zero, right? Now, do you see the y intercepts? How many y intercepts are there? Just one. Good. And what do you want? the y coordinate of that point to be. Just give me a number. Okay, so people give this got this one y coordinate and one y intercept. So give me 
you know, what, what do you think of my quarter it is? Somebody said 10, 10 is fine. So the coordinates at this point, I'm not even gonna write the coordinates. If you want it to be 10, zero, that's fine. And what would that be? It'd be maybe four, zero, and that would be yeah, 10, zero, or 11, zero, whatever. Okay, that could be zero, 10. Okay, I think I might have said 10, zero, so you know that. Um, okay, so we've established now an x-intercept occurs when y equals zero and a y-intercept occurs when x equals zero, right? Intercept occurs if y equals zero, y intercept occurs if x equals zero. People have trouble with this idea throughout pre-calculus because no matter what I say about this is something you've always got to remember, they always forget, okay? Because they don't follow up on what I'm recommending here. And it costs some problems and points throughout the course, okay? So get it in your head now. So if you're going to get the pre-calculus, you're not going to stumble like people always do. Okay. Follow up. Make sure you understand that. So what's the x-intercept here? What are you going to do to that equation? What what what, uh, what number could you plug in for one of the variables? Okay, well, we've got a pretty good response there. If what do you know about the x-intercept? Well, y equals zero. So you're going to let y equals zero and find out what x is, right? Then you'll have a point on the graph that's on the x-axis. Um, when you're working your problems, you need to be writing out your thinking. And you need to be bringing that to class, okay? Now it's optional. You don't want to, you don't have to, but uh, you're going to be much more likely to be successful in the course and in later courses if you get in the habit of writing out as much as possible. Now, you know, if it's 10 minutes to the deadline, you got three problems to do, you'll go, you're going to go ahead and slop through them. You're probably not going to write it out. Of course, after the deadline, you can go back and write something out. On the other hand, if, if there just isn't enough time, as long as you've written a number of problems out so I can see what you're thinking and I can see how you're structuring your problems, then uh, you're going to make much better progress, okay? So I'm not requiring, but pretty much every day I'm going to ask you to show me what you've done. And you don't learn by, you don't learn as well by just responding on a computer screen. Write it out. It reinforces what you're doing. It makes you think and it stays with you much better. So when you get to the test, which you're going to have uh, in the upcoming week, um, you're not going to need a whole lot of review. Okay? You're already going to pretty much know it. A light review will get you through it. Now, that's ideal. It doesn't always work out that way, but um, that's what you want to do. And you start out by writing out your work. Okay? Then... I can give you pointers. Can't do much if I don't see your work. All I see is what you got right and wrong on your online assignments. Uh, it tells me stuff. I can look at the pattern of what you understand and what you don't. I still know what the specifics are. I need, need to see your work to do that, okay? And I'll be much to your benefit. Okay, so anyhow, okay. this has X intercepts. Y equals zero. Four X minus seven times zero equals 28 implies that X equals seven. And solve that equation easily. 
this is going to go away. You're just going to divide 28 by 4 in that cell. Now, remember, you had homework problems where you had to find x intercepts and y intercepts, right? And just as an illustration, the whole idea didn't really stick with you. You did it, but it didn't really take root the way it would if you were writing things on it. So, okay? So, not being critical, I'm just telling you, this is what a, a good strategy for success. And y'all are working hard, and I think it's going to do real well. But make sure you do that. Okay. Now, what can you do about the y intercept? Write out something that explains what you're doing when you find the y intercept. It's going to look just like this, except it's going to be the y intercept. And the details are going to be a little different. Okay, now everybody's got the whole thing written out, but everybody's got the essential thing written out. Still, I want all the words. There are three lines here. So my first line is going to be y intercept when, when what? Well, everything we've talked about, it happens when x equals zero. Then we write our equation with zero for x, and this will tell us what y should be. So there it is. And now, sometimes you got to take some steps and solve the equation. You ought to write those out. Can't solve it in your head. Uh, but I'm going to get y equals negative 4. The x intercept is actually 7. I say the x intercept is at 7, 0. Okay. The y intercepts at zero negative four. Now, two x plus y equals ten. Now, I'm not going to write out the details, but when you're doing homework, I want you to do it. It will save you trouble and time and points in the long run. Here's the end of that line. Okay. Oh. I'm just going to put three dots down here. The three dots mean write out everything I've got here, but we're not going to take the time to do that because I know you know what to do at this point. Make sure you do it. So x intercept three dots x equals five so the intercept is at five zero. Y intercept etc. But I know all this stuff. We get y equals ten. So at the point zero ten, meaning of course the y intercept is at zero ten. Now we can sketch some graphs. We've got two points on each line, the x-intercept and the y-intercept. That's often the best way to construct a graph of your line. Sometimes it isn't, but uh, most of the time it is. Okay, so we have a point seven zero. And we have the point and another thing I really want you to do, anytime you put a point on the graph, put a vertical dotted line and a horizontal dotted line through. Okay? And let it work. Now, if you got 50 points in a graph, you're not going to be able to do that. If you're doing these graphs, and most of the graphs we do in this course, you can. 
Now there's a horizontal line through the x-intercept, but that's the x-axis. <laughs> so we really can't draw that. It would be inside the x-axis. Uh, and here we have a point zero negative four. Right here's our line. This is a line y equals four x minus seven y equals twenty eight. Now the line two x plus y equals ten. Well, we graph its intercepts five zero and zero ten. So we got five zero. Now seven zero is here. Five zero would be about here. And it's, it's, it just takes a second, remind ourselves that this is on the line where x equals 5. And then we've got 0, 10. Okay, well, if that's 4, and there's 4, 8, 10 would be up about here. So I'm going to have to extend my y axis a little bit. So I'm going to say it's about here. So here is 0, 10. There's the x and y intercept of our second graph. And the sketch a straight line. And get the line y equals 10. And kind of make sure that our, yeah, y equals 10 is a little bit low. Should have been up even higher. But it's a hand sketch graph. We're not going to be totally accurate. Now, the question is uh, when we solve this system, um, we're trying to find a value of x and a value of y that satisfies both equations. So a pair of values, x and y, such that when you plug them into this one, you get 28, and when you plug them into this one, you get 10. Now, we're unlikely to be able to do that with this particular system. We're un unlikely to be able to do that with complete accuracy, but we should come close from a graph using a graph. Okay, so the x and y values, well, if we take this point here, it's on each line, okay? And every point on each line gives us a value of x and y that satisfies the equation. So this point should satisfy both equations. Well, what do we estimate the coordinates of this point to be? If you've got your own graph, you can estimate from it or just estimate from mine. What does it look like X is and what does it look like Y is at that point? Okay, so we've got one estimate, a reasonable estimate. Maybe x equals 6, y equals negative 2. Okay. Well, plug in 6 for x and negative 2 for y and see how close we get to 28. Just plug those numbers into this equation, then plug them in to this equation. Okay, now we're checking our estimate. We got 2x plus y equals 10. I'm going to plug the numbers into this equation. I've already plugged them into this equation. We'll do it over here now. 2x plus y equals 10. That would be then 2 times 6 plus negative 2 equals 10. Now I start by writing out the equation so I know what I'm doing. Okay. Again, that just reinforces something that's Really pretty obvious, but it this takes a second to write the equation out. And then if you're looking back at your notes, you'll know exactly what you did. Because you just see this and you say, okay, where'd that come from? But if you see this first, you know where it came from and you know what you're doing. Document it. Anyhow, you get 12 minus 2 equals 10. 
and you get town equals town. And that's very good. But what you get when you plug into this equation is not, not, not so great, okay? Uh, you get 38 equals 28. And you see, I write the whole equation out, every step. Doesn't take long. I know you get in a hurry. Everybody's got pressures, uh, time pressures and stuff. But this is not good stuff to hurry through. Okay, so the point gave us reasonable results, but that, that was pretty far off. Now, if you look at it, I could, I'm going to refine this estimate. That wasn't a bad estimate, especially since it was made from about three miles away in the corner of the room. We can't really see the details of the graph, but here's zero and here's negative four. Is this closer to zero or closer to negative four? This if it's zero, this if it's negative four. Closer to zero, right? Pretty obvious. So negative two would be halfway between zero and negative four, okay? So how about we use negative one? So first of all, the y quarter may be closer to negative one. Looks to me like it's maybe negative 1.2 or negative 1.3, but we're not going to split hairs on that, okay? And what about the x coordinate? Is it closer to five or closer to seven? Now, it was good. I mean, you, you pick a number between five and seven, and if you're going to pick a whole number, that would be the one to pick, okay? But now it looks like that might, might be five and a half, because six would be here, five and a half would be here. Now, to do the estimate, I would Do just what I said all along so you get a better picture. And I write y little wavy equal sign, meaning approximately equal to one, negative one. And here, if I draw a vertical line through the point, well, Again, this line here is x equals five. And this line is x equals seven. I'm saying that this line is x maybe equals five and a half. Now, if I plug those numbers in, It's not going to be exact, but four times five and a half is 22. So we'd get 22 here, minus seven times negative one, that would be plus seven, we'd get 29. So we'd end up with 29 equals 28. And that's pretty close. Okay, that's, a, that's an improved estimate. And then we've got two X plus Y, that would be two times five and a half is 11. Minus one, well, we looked out. We got 10 again. We got 29 equals 28 up here, which isn't quite so, but it's pretty close. And again, 10 equals 10. I'm just lucky on that one. Okay. Because as I said, I thought that was like maybe close to negative 1.2. Uh, and this may be a 5.4 or something like that. Okay. Well, That's how you solve simultaneous equations approximately using substitution. And that homework is now due tomorrow. Okay. I thought it was going to be due today. It looked like it was by the order in the grade book, but yeah, it was due like in May. And this is February. Okay. Now, Let's take the same system and find out 
what the actual solution is. Among other things, we're going to find out, well, that's something we'd have never been able to estimate. Okay. Uh, but it's going to be pretty close to five and a half, negative one. Okay. So let's write the system out again. Now, I'm going to use a notation here. A one with a circle refers to equation one. A two with a circle refers to equation two. I'm going to put a line down here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I want to write equation one. So write equation one here. Okay. First write these and write these circle numbers. And then write whatever equation one is. Okay, well, that's pretty straightforward. We write this, we write this. And, you know, we don't really want to write it because we see it up here, but we write it. We write it because there's a good reason that I'm asking you to do it. You've got to trust me. Okay. And you'll see what the reason is. And then when you write these out, continue to write them out. Now, one thing I didn't mention, we kind of want to keep the equal signs lined up and the X's and the Y's lined up, okay? Now, what I want you to do is I want you to write negative two multiplied by equation two. What do I mean by that? Now pay careful attention. I mean, multiply both sides of the equation by negative two, okay? It's a valid operation. It doesn't change the solutions of the equation. It doesn't change the graph, but it gives us something that's gonna be very useful. Okay, now people do all kinds of things uh, to mess up the scheme there. They'll take negative two times equation two and write it over here. But up here, we're going to line everything up in a column, okay? The other thing we're going to do is we're not going to write this. This is negative 2 times equation 2. And in other words, negative 2 multiplied by both sides of the equation, right? We're not going to write this down. We're going to write just what we get when we do this. So if we need to do this, and it's not a bad idea, we don't do it here. We do it over here someplace where it's not going to interfere with our lineup of the columns and the scheme of the problem. And it's a good idea to write it off to the side someplace when it's not completely obvious. So I'm going to write. Scratch paper. This is this is let's say we have an area over here for calculations, and over here we have the scheme. Okay. Calculation here, negative two times equation two is and right out. Well, Burke, it is negative 2 multiplied by 2x plus y equals negative 2 multiplied by 10. And then we work that out, we get negative 4x minus 2y equals negative 20. And that's what we're going to write here. Often we'll have to do a calculation to get this. We don't do the calculation here. We do the calculation somewhere else. Okay, I want to emphasize that because people always want to do the calculations right below here and it, it, it messes up the scheme. Okay, this is the scheme over here are the calculations. And it's the calculations over to the right, so they go just somewhere else. Okay, so we get negative 4x minus 2y equals negative 20. Well, 
Now we're going to do equation one plus equation two. By equation one, I mean the most recent equation one. We don't go back to this one, even though this is the same. And the most recent equation two, we don't go back to this one. We take the two equations we have here, and this tells you what we're going to do. We're going to add both sides of equation one to both sides of equation two. So what do you get when you do that? Okay, so what do we do? Well, it's easy to see what we do over here. We add 28 and negative 20. 28 and negative 20 is 8. And we're going to add 4x minus 7y to negative 4x minus 2y. Meaning, among other things, the 4x is going to be added to the negative 4x, and this negative 7y is going to be added to negative 2y. So if we have negative 4x, if we have 4x and negative 4x, we get 0x. And negative 7y and negative 2y is negative 9y. So that tells us that negative 9y equals 8, so that y equals negative 8 ninths. Okay. Now that agrees pretty well with our picture. And it isn't too bad with our estimate, although we estimated that y would be negative one. Okay. Well, negative eight ninths is really close to negative one, right? Now I said the way the graph came out, I thought that might be more like negative one point two. But the yeah, graph is slopped down here. I didn't, I wasn't real careful with my scale. I just tried to estimate what things were. And among other things, well, it wouldn't have helped. And the pen should have been a little higher. And the distance here is too, uh, yeah, not too bad. Um, okay, anyhow, this tells us that if I had done this with complete accuracy, it would have been negative eight nights. Okay? So I'm going to actually just put the actual on here in doing the equations. We know that the y coordinate here then is negative eight ninths because doing valid algebra at every step on the system, we drew that conclusion, okay? So then xy that makes this, okay, the xy pair that makes these come out exact is gonna to have to have y equals negative eight ninths. Now, what's the x coordinate that makes it exact? Well, I've got y equals negative eight nines here. I can plug that in for y in either the first equation or the second and solve for x. So let's say, uh, for simplicity, I'll plug in the second equation. The first one would have been a good illustration. So I'm going to plug this negative eight ninths in for y. But what's my equation going to be? Into this equation, we plug the negative eight ninths. What do you got? So you're going to write down the original equation, the original equation two, but you're going to replace y by its value negative eight ninths. Okay, so if we replace y by negative eight ninths, we get Two x plus negative eight ninths equals ten. Now, what's our reflex when we see this equation? What are we going to do to solve the equation? What's our first step going to be? Uh, this is another thing that I tell people about 
at least 20 times during a pre-calculus course and almost nobody ever knows to do it, okay? Make yourself a big note here. This again will save you much pain. And of course, open math is telling you the same thing. If you got denominator in an equation, multiply both sides by a common denominator. The only denominator you have is nine, so it is the common denominator. So we multiply, I'll bring this up here, okay? So we do nine times two X minus eight ninths equals nine times 10. Now avoid the pitfall. You don't multiply nine just by the negative eight ninths. You gotta multiply it by both sides of the equation. Otherwise your equation is no longer valid. Okay, you're just inflating both sides by nine. If they were equal before, when you make them nine times as big, they're still equal. Okay, it's got to be the whole side that gets multiplied by the nine. Now this gives us eighteen x minus eight equals ninety. Why do we get eight? Well, nine times eight over nine. Is nine over one times eight over nine. We can switch the one and the nine in the denominators. We get nine over nine times eight over one, and we get eight. I mean, open math to tell you to cancel, and you cancel a factor of the denominator by a factor of the numerator. That's valid, but nobody ever applies the rule correctly, so I don't like to talk about it. Okay, well, we get this, and we'll finish solving it. Okay, how do we solve this? We had eight to both sides. We get eight from X equals 98. Now, skipping a step here, you should include it. You get X equals 98 over 18 which reduces to 49 over nine, which is five and four ninths, if we want to make a comparison with our graphical solution. Well, you notice that our well, actual Y coordinate here was calculated to be negative eight ninths, which is real close to negative one. Okay. And we get five and four ninths here, and that's five and a half. Five and four ninths is really close to five and four eighths. Five and four eighths would be five and a half, so it's really close. So we get we get the uh, Five and four ninths, negative eight ninths. And then we check. Okay. Okay, well, let's take our first equation, four X minus seven y equals 28. So we do four times 49 ninths minus seven times negative eight ninths should equal 28. Well, four times 49 ninths is 196 over nine. We just multiply the four by the 49. And this is going to be plus 56 over 9, which should be 28. 196 and 56 is 242. And that should be 28. 
and that works out. Forty times nine is one hundred and eighty, leaving uh, it's not one hundred and forty-two. It's a, two, not two hundred and forty-two. It's two hundred and fifty-two. That works out. Forty times nine is one hundred and eighty, leaving us seventy-two. Nine into seventy-two is eight twenty-eight. Okay. Now we're out of time. We also want to check the second equation. Okay, so what we've done is called the process of elimination. We picked numbers to multiply these two equations by so that one of the variables would subtract out. So one of the variables disappears, we can solve for the other one. Then we take that other variable and plug it into one of the equations, we solve the equation we get, and that gives us a value for each variable, and then we check it to make sure it works. First, we will sketch a graph and come up with a reasonable estimate. If we stop with the estimate six, negative two, well, negative eight nights isn't that far from negative two, and six is not that far from five and four nights, right? That's not a bad estimate. Uh, we improved it a little bit, and actually, by luck, we got pretty close. But if you can't reconcile your exact solution with your picture, then you got to figure out which one's wrong. Okay. Okay. Questions? 